Hello dear students. In the last classes we were discussing about come September the powerful lecture Arunthati Roy delivered in New Mexico. We saw her attack against US foreign policy, their war against terror and we were dealing with Israel invasion the war between Israel and Palestine and how the two countries suffer so let's begin from the next paragraph we have stopped where Israel state was declared in 1948 and in 1967, Israel occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip. And the next paragraph. Over the decades, there have been uprisings, wars, intifadas. Tens of thousands have lost their lives. So there were revolt, there were wars in between two nations. Intifada is a rebellion or a pricing or a resistance movement and Palestinian uprising was there against Israel. Intifadas, it, that means the Palestinian uprising a revolt against Israeli occupation of West ba Bank and Gaza Strip. In 1967, Israel occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip and Intifadas, Intifada is that Palestinian uprising against Israeli occupation of these places. Many people lost their lives. Accords and treaties have been signed. An agreement was signed in 1993 that was Declaration of Principles on Interim Self-Government Arrangements. DOP was signed on White House lawn in 1993 in the month of September. Ceasefires, that is suspension of fighting, declared and but it was violated. But the bloodshed doesn't end. People continued to lose their life. Palestine still remains illegally occupied by the country of Israel by the people of Israel, by the government. Its people, Palestinian people, live in inhuman conditions, in virtual bantustans, seemingly that the area is controlled by, governed by Palestine, but that is not the case. Israel occupation was there, where they are subjected to collective punishments. People in Palestine, even it is appeared to be self-governed time, people are subjected to punishments. Curfew was there, 24 hours curfew sustained. And people were humiliated and people were punished, brutalized way on a daily basis. They never know when their homes will be demolished. They were living in inhuman conditions. Threat of war. Any time attacks can be there. They don't know. They never know when their homes will be demolished. When their children will be shot dead. When their precious trees will be cut. When their roads will be closed. When they will be allowed to walk down to the market to buy food and medicine. When they can lead a normal life like rest of the people in the world. They don't know. They just can't enjoy the basic human rights. And when they will not. They live with no semblance of dignity. Dignity was out from their life. They lived in inhuman conditions and they were denied respect. With not much hope in sight, no hope left for them. 
they have no control over their lands their security their movement their communication their water supply they didn't have any control on their land about their security about their movements everything was controlled their communication was controlled their water supply was controlled by the other country so when accords are signed treaties agreements are signed and words like autonomy and even statehood bandied about when treaties are signed self government of palestine it was declared even statehood was circulated all throughout the place then arunthati roy asking that it is always worth asking what sort of autonomy what sort of state what sort of rights will its citizens have young palestinians who cannot control their anger turn themselves into human bombs and haunt israel's streets and public places from 2000s dozens of exploding palestinian human bombs hit the jewish state and affected the life of people palestinians also came to see suicide attacks as a very good weapon a strategic weapon a smart bomb they believed that it balances the israel's technological and conventional military dominance blowing themselves up it kills ordinary people injecting terror into daily life and eventually hardening both societies suspicion and mutual hatred of each other ultimately this suicide human bombs will increase the mutual hatred between each countries each bombing invites merciless reprisal if palestinian attacked israel definitely there will be a counter attack from israel side each bombing invites merciless counter attacks and even more hardship on palestinian people palestinian people suffered a lot but then suicide bombing is an act of individual despair it is not born out of a revolutionary tactic but it is the product of individual despair although palestinian attacks strike terror into israeli citizens they provide the perfect cover for the israeli government's daily incursions into palestinian territory israeli government took these palestinian attacks as a cause to attack or to uh, invade palestinian territory arunthati roy states that it is the perfect excuse for old fashioned 19th century colonialism israel was invading palestine and this colonialism was dressed up as a new fashioned 21st century war actually colonialism was happening there according to arunthati roy israel's staunchest political and military ally is and always has been the us israel's strong israel's song strong support was united states the us government has blocked along with israel almost every un resolution the united nations put forward to ensure peace resolution that sought a peaceful equitable solution to the conflict israel government and us government acted against the resolutions 
it has supported almost every war that Israel has fought. America supported Israel's war against Palestine. When Israel attacks Palestine, it is American missiles that smash through Palestinian homes. America's staunch support was clear. And everywhere Israel receives billion dollars from the United States taxpayers' money. Arankadi Roy states that it is the money of the people in America that their government is investing in another nation for war, for, to cause destruction. She is giving her speech in Mexico only. Some experts say that from 2011 onwards, U.S. intro interest has waned. Certain terrorist groups posed more threats to U.S. interest on the war and U.S. interest in resolving the conflict between Israel and Palestine has waned. Moving on to next paragraph. What lessons should we draw from this tragic conflict? The conflict between Israel and Palestine. What is the lesson that we should draw out? Is it really impossible for Jewish people who suffered so cruelly themselves? Jewish people in the history as suffered more than anybody in this world because of the Nazi persecution, anti-Semitism more cruelly perhaps than any other people in history. To understand the vulnerability and the yearning of those whom they have displaced. Arantadi Roy asks that, is it really impossible for Jewish people to understand the vulner vulnerability and the yearning of those whom they have displaced? Jewish people have suffered a lot. So they can't they understand this attack, this trauma of the other people, this longing for freedom, longing for safety of other people. Can't they understand? Does extreme suffering always kindle cruelty? She's asking. If you have suffered a lot, do you always support cruelty towards others? What hope does this leave the human race with? Is there any hope left if this is the situation? What will happen to the Palestinian people in the event of a victory? Arantadi Roy asked that. What will happen to the Palestinian people in the event of a victory? She asked. Recently, Palestinian armed groups in Gaza, they started to launch rockets toward Israeli population centers. Then Israelis counter-attack also happened. Many of the attacks by both the parties, both the armed groups used explosive weapons with wide area effects in most largely populated places. When a nation without a state eventually proclaims a state, what kind of state will it be? What horrors will be perpetrated under its flag? Is it a separate state that we should be fighting for or the rights to a life of liberty and dignity for everyone regardless of their ethnicity or religion? Arunthati Roy raises serious questions. She asks, when the Palestine come out of the war, when it is declared to be a state, what kind of state it to be? Whether it should be fighting for a separate state or whether the country ensures liberty and dignity for everybody living in the state, regardless of their religion, regardless of their ethnicity.
she asks she raises she poses very serious questions palestine was once a secular bulwark in the middle east a defensive wall in the middle east a strong position in the middle east but now the weak undemocratic by all accounts corrupt but avowedly non-sectarian plo openly it says it is not relating to any different groups any religious groups but losing ground to hamas plo the palestine liberation organization which was founded in 1964 with the purpose of liberation of palestine through armed struggle through war through fight it is recognized as the legitimate representative of the people of palestine but it is losing ground to hamas it is a palestinian sunni islamic fundamentalist militant nationalist organization Hamas is the organization fundamentalist organization islamic organization that support an overtly sectarian ideology that is related to a particular group openly they acknowledge they have sectarian ideology ideology they need to practice of a definite group and they fight in the name of islam to quote from their manifesto to quote from the manifesto of hamas arun thadi roy says that they quote we will be its soldiers and the firewood of its fire which will burn the enemies they overtly declare war there is a threat to the world what hope does this leave the human race with the world is called upon to condemn suicide bombers the world disapproves suicide bombers they criticize it but arunthadi roy asks further but can we ignore the long road they have journeyed the palestinian people have undergone on before they have arrived at this destination of suicide bombers attacks like a suicide bomber as suicide bombers to the other state can we ignore that long journey of that people September 11th 1922 to September 11 2002 the long years but Israel Palestine conflict started before ages it's a long history of war not just this 80 years and arunthati roy says that this is a long time she mentions about 80 years it's a long time to have been waging war is there some advice the world can give the people of palestine should they just take golda meir's suggestion and make a real effort not to exist she asks she questions golda meir was the fourth prime minister of israel golda meir once quoted there were no such thing as palestinians she stated that when there was an independent palestinian people with a palestinian state when was there it was not as though there was a palestinian people in palestine considering itself as a palestinian people and we came and threw them out and took their country away from them they did not exist her comments concerning palestinians became crucial she denies the existence of palestinian people in another part of the middle east september 11th strikes a more recent code arunthadi roy again speaks about the month september 
there was an attack. It was on the 11th of September 1990 that George W. Bush Sr., then President of the U.S., made a speech to a joint session of Congress announcing his government's decision to go to war against Iraq. It was on 11th of September 1990 they announced the government's decision to move against Iraq. Iraq War, a Gulf War, was a war waged led by United States against Iraq after the Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. Iraq invaded Kuwait in the year 1990. The US government says that Saddam Hussein is a war criminal a cruel military despot who has committed genocide against his own people. That's a fairly accurate description of the man. US government says that Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein was a dictator. He ruled Iraq from 1979 till the US led US overthrew him in 2003. Saddam Hussein, the cruelest, order the execution of dozens of soldiers. He raised hundreds of villages in northern Iraq. He used chemical weapons and machine guns to kill thousands of Kurdish people. Kurdish people are an uh, ethnic group in Western Asia which spans in Turkey, Iran, northern Iraq and uh, Syria. They gained autonomous status in a 1970 agreement. Autonomous Kurdistan region was there within the Federal Iraqi Republic in 2005. Saddam Hussein is known for, for killing thousands of Kurdish people. Today we know that the same year, U.S. government provided him, the government of America itself provided him with $500 million in subsidies to buy American farm products. U.S. government provided Saddam, Saddam Hussein with more money the next year, that was in 1988, government gave him assistance, millions of dollars. U.S. government gave him millions of dollars assistance when he was genociding the Kurdish people. Kurdish people who lived in northern Iraq. The next year, after he had successfully completed his genocidal campaign, again the U.S. government doubled its subsidy to $1 billion. Monetary support provided by the U.S. government to Saddam Hussein in Iraq. It also provided him with high-quality germ seed for anthrax and helicopters and well-use material that could be used to manufacture chemical and biological weapons. Iraq developed anthrax, the disease, with the help of the money provided from U.S. government and, uh, and also they initiated biological weapons. Saddam Hussein initiated biological weapons program in Iraq in the early 1980s. They have signed biological weapons convention but they initiated the extensive biological weapons. Their scientists investigated biological weapon, anthrax, botulinum, aflatoxin. They had weaponized these diseases by the help, by the support of US. So it turns out that while Saddam Hussein was carrying out his worst atrocities using biological weapons, his cruel atrocities towards people, killing genocide of people, 
the US and the UK governments were his close allies. These governments supported him, they provided him with money. It has been recorded that Hussein had prisoners and they were bombarded with anthrax and chemical weapons for experimental purposes. They began these experiments in 1980s during the war time after the experiments on sheep and camels. Dozens of prisoners are believed to have died in pain during these experiments. Arunthati Roy questions, so what changed? In 1990, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. His sin was not so much that he had committed an act of war, but that he had acted independently, without orders from his master. Comments Aish Arunthati Roy Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait he acted independently. He didn't get concern from US government and the UK government. He acted independently. He invaded Kuwait. His sin was not that he was invading Kuwait, but he had acted independently. That was his charge. This display of independence was enough to upset the power equation in the Gulf. So it was decided that Saddam Hussein be exterminated like a pet that has outlived its owner's affection. Saddam Hussein attacked, invaded Kuwait to gain more control over oil supply of the Middle East. United States and the UN Security Council demanded Saddam Hussein to withdraw his troops from Kuwait but he refused. This reason was enough. He acted independently and he need to be destroyed completely. Like a pet outgrown the affection of the honor, the honor's affection got ended by this his independent act, Saddam Hussein B destroyed completely by the government like a pet who has done something against the honor's affection u.s government also got furiated when saddam hussein did something on when he acted independently so the government thought he to be destroyed completely arunthati roy continues the first allied attack on iraq took place on January 91, 1991. The world watched the primetime war as it they were watching some series. As it was played out on television in India in those days, you had to go to a five-star hotel lobby to watch CNN. CNN was broadcasting the war. Tens of thousands of people were killed in a month of devastating bombing. The TV channels were commercializing war. People were killed. The people in Iraq got killed in a month of bombings. Thousands of people got killed. What many do not know is that the war never ended then. The initial fury simmered down into the longest sustained air attack on a country since the Vietnam War. It has been recorded that the bombing campaigns of the Vietnam War were the longest and heaviest bombardment. It has been said that the US dropped about 76 lakhs tons of explosives in Vietnam. The devastating bombings, the air attack in the in, uh, air attack lasted for a month on a country on Iraq since the Vietnam War. Long as sustained bombings of air attack. Over the last decade, 
American and British forces have fired thousands of missiles and bombs on Iraq. In the decade of economic sanctions, in the decade, 10 years of economic sanctions that followed the war, Iraqi civilians have been denied food, medicine, hospital, equipment, ambulances, clean water, the basic essentials. A sanction is a penalty levied on another country. And economic sanction, sanctions can include restrictions on financial transactions. Deep economic crisis were, was there. And the people were denied food, people deny, were denied medicines, hospital equipments, basic rights were denied in Iraq. Ambulances were denied, clean water, people suffered a lot. During all these years, American government, the people in America, the citizens of America were safe. Soldiers lost their life, definitely. But the country was remained safe. Rest all, everywhere, America was creating problems. In Middle East, they were creating problems. They have brought destruction in Japan, had a major role in Israel-Palestine conflict, waging war against the Middle East. Arundhati Roy continues, about half a million Iraqi children have died as a result of these transactions, as a result of these penalty. So children, I am stopping here and we will continue with come September in our next class. Thank you.